Every school child knows that Abraham Lincoln, Honest Abe, is great in history partly because he was so dedicated to tolerance and a commitment to equal opportunity. It's lesser known about Vince Lombardi. For his era, he was well ahead of the national norm on racial tolerance, tolerance on gender issues, lifestyle issues. If you could play and play his way, he wouldn't care if you were green or what you did in your private life. The bloody baptism of America's gay rights movement took place in June of 1969 during New York's Stonewall riots. Reflecting the nation's hostile environment towards people like Washington fullback Ray McDonald. Correctly, in a Look magazine article, you said that if you had had a chance, you would have picked Ray McDonald the year that the Redskins picked him. Is that correct? That is correct. I can say in retrospect now that Ray McDonald was the number one pick on our draft list. And Lombardi, when he came, understood that Ray McDonald was gay. And Lombardi wanted to give him every benefit of the doubt and every chance and said to one of his assistant coaches, George Dixon, if I find any coach challenging McDonald's manhood, they'll be fired immediately. Well, I think in that regard, my dad was a little bit ahead of his time in that his brother Harold was, was gay. So I think he had a, an open mind. He had a great respect for all people, felt that you may not approve of what a person is doing, but it was not your right to condemn him in any way. Lombardi couldn't have cared less about McDonald's sexual preferences. What did disturb him was Ray's apparent lack of dedication to football. I think with Ray McDonald, he had problems remembering plays. There were times he would fumble, even in practice. And what happened is Ray McDonald was uh, late for a meeting. And this is after he'd had a couple of bad practices. In walks Ray McDonald into the meeting. And Lombardi called everybody Mr. And he says, Mr. Where in the hell have you been? He said, Coach, I was just downstairs, you know, just relaxing, playing the piano. Playing the piano? You're not here to play the piano. You're here to play football. Lombardi fired him on the spot and told him to report to, I believe, some semi-pro team in Roanoke, Virginia. That was the last time I saw him. We had two players on the 69 team that were also gay. We heard the Ray McDonald story, but we didn't know that Dave Copay and Jerry Smith were gay. Jurgensen threw a perfect pass to his favorite clutch receiver, Jerry Smith. I think for the most part, they were accepted because they were very good players, particularly Jerry. He was just outstanding, and he played, you know, he's, he was just not only a gifted receiver, but he was a tough kid. In effect, we were all hiding from ourselves in those days, and the way you could hide from yourself was to be the, the toughest guy on the team. It didn't make any difference what their preferences were. You know, uh, the guys treated them with respect, and we got respect back from them, and that's what you, that's all you can ask for. The love that one human has for another human, who just happens to be white or black, rich or poor, enemy or friend, because heart power is the strength of America, I hope hard power will be the strength of the Washington Redskins. Because of Lombardi's history on that issue, which was so far advanced of the football culture, they were all able to exist and, and to some degree thrive with the Redskins under Lombardi. People were not coming out of the closet during that period, and particularly not in football. I mean, it would be years before the first football player would come out of the closet. Copé would be that player. He was the first pro athlete to come out in a groundbreaking book whose writing was clearly influenced by Lombardi. His statement that you sometimes hear him screaming from the sidelines, somebody do something. I think that so stuck with me all the time that years later when I was back in Washington, D.C., I could hear Coach Lombardi in the background in my head, and that's when I spoke out. Maybe to create some room and, and to, to destroy all the lies and the myths that you've always heard about homosexuality. Coach Lombardi, he gave me the hope to continue to believe in myself even when I left the Washington Redskins. Those days in Washington totally changed my life. <laughs>